Greetings everybody, this is Percival here. And this is an article that I've made back last year in 2020, roughly November 12th. Is it 12th? Oh, fuck. Either way, Animal Jam has been hacked multiple times. And I do not trust that Wildworks will actually keep your data safe if you do use Cinder. I'm going to be reading out this article, by the way. Our game developer leaked 46 million accounts. Chat and collaboration tools such as Slack are critical for software development teams, but a data breach experienced by Utah-based software developer Wildworks illustrates why, uh, why developers should think twice before sharing sensitive database keys over the chat. Pun. Wildworks is notifying millions of parents of a data breach that compromised 46 million accounts for a desktop and mobile kids game called Animal Jam. Notifications are also being sent from Have I Been Pwned? The data breach notification service from Australian breach expert Troy Hunt. I've actually used Have I Been Pwned a couple of times, mostly to check if a couple of my passwords have been ducked out on the web somewhere. One of them that I still do use has, the other one hasn't really been chucked out on the web yet. A database containing the data was advertised Tuesday on the well-known hacker forum for the buying and sharing of data. The records span from when Animal Jam was created around 2010 until the present according to Clark Stacey, CEO of Wildworks. The 46 million exposed records include usernames and salty password hashes plus full birth dates of children for 5.7 million accounts and birth years for 14.8 million accounts. The gender of children was indicated for 24 million accounts. 7 million of those accounts contain email addresses for accounts linked to both Animal Jam and Animal Jam Classic. No full names of children were leaked, however, which may mitigate the impact of birth dates being leaked. Of course, Clark Stacey says that he understands that the profile of our typical threat actor is a bored teenage boy. Clearly, this was, much, this was a much more sophisticated attack and it appeared a month ago. <coughs> Animal Jam is a role-playing game Wildworks launched in 2020... Oh, for fuck's sake. 2010. It's 2010. Yeah. Ugh. In partnership with National Geographic Kids. Designed as a game to learn about the wildlife. Users furnish a den by collecting or buying special items, and the game allows users to interact with other players via a chat function. A 2016 review of the game in the Washington Post was complimentary but highlighted some less attractive aspects, including a semi-creepy chat experience and a smidge of online bullying. The tale behind how Animal Jam's database was compromised should serve as a warning to software developers about how careful they need to be to avoid sharing sensitive credentials over services such as Slack. As part of the article titled Snatching the Key, Wildworks detected the breach after it occurred between October 10 and October 12. October 10th and 12th. Oh, for fuck's sake. I fucking hate the word 12th. Who the fuck designed that word? Fuck that. That's it, I'm speaking in French. I'm going to speak in French in the next fucking video. God damn it. Anyway, back to the article. But it initially appeared no data from Animal Jam's MySQL database had been exfiltrated, Stacey says. Viewing the, viewing the breach as low risk, the company opted not to notify its users. Around the same time, Wildworks CTO, Bo Brewer, says he was notified by Slack that someone had gained access to his account. Slack had detected oddities, including that Brewer's account was used to post anime music videos on numerous channels, he says. How Brewer's Slack account was com compromised remains a mystery. 
He says he used a strong password and had two-step verification enabled. He used Authy to generate the access code. Slack, he says, has refused to provide, provide details on how his account was compromised. Slack disputes this, however, and says that Brewer did not have two-factor authentication on his account. This may have been the result of malware or the reuse of credentials previously exposed, it said in a statement. Brewer says he immediately forced a reset on all active Slack sessions and reset his password. Slack provided Brewer with a list of Slack channels and files that were accessed by the attacker. Unfortunately, one of these files contained contained an Amazon Web Services key that had been shared with him by a Wildworks developer. We deacted the key in Amazon Web Services, but it apparently wasn't before they were able to spin up an instance via EC2 and gain access to our database, Brewer says. During its investigation, Stacy says, Wildworks found that the server the attack had launched used the curl command to reach the Animal Jam database, but it didn't do anything else. It's now suspected, however, that the attacker may have spun up the EC2 instance and then tunneled through to the database, which Stacy says didn't leave a telltale command trace. Stacy says Wildworks, Wildworks probably should have quickly notified its users, but understand that the profile of our t- typical threat actor is a bored teenage boy. The Slack intruder announced himself by posting obvious nonsense to Bo's account which made us think one of the script kiddies always poking at Animal Jam found a Slack zero day on a forum somewhere and came in to vandalise and show off, Stacy says. We clamped down to secure anything they accessed and felt relieved that they hadn't found a way to get into any sensitive user data. Clearly, this was a much more sophisticated attack than it appeared a month ago. Slack also disputes Stacy's statement. There has been no breach of Slack's infrastructure, the company says. Wildworks situation highlights a trend in data breaches, Hunt says. We as an industry seem to be at this point where a single thing going wrong is bringing down the whole house of cards, he says. This part of the article is what was breached. It's titled what was breached. Apologies. The 7 million email accounts belong to parents whom Animal Jam requests register so that they can provide consent for their child to crea- crea- create an account, Stacy says. Those parents also get access to the control panel to monitor their child's account. At least 32 million player usernames were also compromised, Stacy says. However, that world work system prevents the child from using their real name as a username, and the selection of usernames is moderated by people. The breach also compromised other personally identifiable information, Stacey says, for 12,653 accounts, the names and billing addresses of some parents who created accounts around 2010 were exposed. Also, 16,131 accounts contained a parent's first and last name, but no billing address. No financial data was compromised. Stacey says Wildworks will send email you notifications to users and has posted an FAQ about the breach on its website. It is also preparing a report for the FBI FBI Cyber Task Force. All players will have to change their passwords. Wildworks is a small company, but we take player security very seriously, Stacey says. SHA1, problematic. Setting aside the PII that was leaked, the biggest concern about this breach may be the sort of password hashes. Salting is an extra security measure to thwart cracking. The original post advertising data for sale indicated the hashes used SHA1 and that 13 million of them had been cracked, meaning plain text passwords had been discovered. Brewer says, however, we don't currently have reason to believe that the hackers responsible can, can decrypt the salted slash hashed passwords in this breach. SHA1 has been considered an insufficient hashing algorithm for nearly a decade. Hashing is a one-way process that turns a plain text password into a cryptographic representation of it, which in theory is impossible to, to discover. The National Institute of Standards and Technology in 2011 
deprecated the use of SHA-1 due to the rising potential for collision attacks, in which two different files could share the same SHA-1 hash. Also, advancing compute computing power and new attack techniques have made it e easier to crack SHA-1 hashes. Even SHA-1 hashes that are salted are ineffective, as pointed out eight years ago in this blog post by Hunt. Most organisations now use bcrypt to hash passwords. bcrypt is more resistant to efforts for brute force attempts. Generating random bcrypt hashes is rather than generating SHA-1 or other hashing algorithms. Brewer says Wildworks plans to move to bcrypt before the end of the year. In the meantime, it has been using p BKDF2V2. Nonetheless, Hunt says that means there's probably a large pool of people who now should change their password on other services where their Animal Jam, Animal Jam password may have been reused. Now, at the time of this article, article yeah, this was posted in 2020, if they were using an SHA1 hash, and even after it was deprecated by by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in 2011, and that means they've been using a deprecated system for at least nine years, nine, ten. This breach happened in 2020. Additionally, they were salted, and those are infective. And that was pointed out in 2012. So if you NFT guys do like Cinder and want to take a look at it, your information probably won't be safe. Particularly since it's using blockchain information, which can easily be linked to a bank account. And if someone gets into that bank account, you could lose so much more fucking money than the stuff that you paid for an NFT of a weird fey looking creature that was probably planned for a furry game called Feral. Anyways, if you do disregard this then that's sort of your problem. I do want to point out that the official in the official thing the Discord there's a rule, rule 13, that states that Wildworks themselves is not responsible for any scams or fraudulent transactions. And that it's your responsibility to keep your NFT safe. 